And our final reader for tonight, Emily St. John Mandel, is the author of Last Night in Montreal, The Singer's Gun, and The Lola Quartet. Her short fiction and essays have been anthologized in numerous collections, including Best American Mystery Stories 2013. She is a staff writer for The Millions and lives in New York City. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Emily St. John Mandel. Good evening. It's such an honor to be here and such fine company and such a pleasure to hear all of these people read again. And thank you all for staying till the end. It was a long program. Um, I'm here with Station Eleven, my fourth novel. It's set about half of it in the present day and about half of it at a point in time, approximately 20 years after a flu pandemic has changed the world as we know it. I'm going to read about five minutes from the first chapter, which is set in the present day. This is a performance of King Lear on a snowy night in Toronto. The king stood in a pool of blue light, unmoored. This was act four of Lear, a winter night at the Elgin Theater in Toronto. Earlier in the evening, three little girls had played a clapping game on stage as the audience entered, childhood versions of Lear's daughters. And now they'd returned as hallucinations in the mad scene. The king stumbled and reached for them as they flitted here and there in the shadows. His name was Arthur Leander. He was 51 years old, and there were flowers in his hair. Dost thou know me? The actor playing Gloucester asked. I remember thine eyes well enough, Arthur said, distracted by the child version of Cordelia. And this was when it happened. There was a change in his face. He stumbled. He reached for a column, but misjudged the distance and struck it hard with the side of his hand. He cradled his hand to his chest like a broken bird. The actor portraying Edgar was watching him closely. It was still possible at that moment that Arthur was acting, but in the first row of the orchestra section, a man was rising from his seat. He'd been training to be a paramedic. The man's girlfriend tugged at his sleeve, hissed, Jeevan, what are you doing? And Jeevan himself wasn't sure at first, the rose behind him murmuring for him to sit. An usher was moving toward him. Snow began to fall over the stage. Sir, the usher said, would you please? But Arthur Leander was running out of time. He swayed, his eyes unfocused, and it was obvious to Jeevan that he wasn't Lear anymore. Jeevan pushed the usher aside and made a dash for the steps leading up to the stage, but a second usher was jogging down the aisle, which forced Jeevan to throw himself at the stage without the benefit of stairs. It was higher than he'd thought, and he had to kick the first usher, who'd grasped hold of his sleeve. The snow was plastic, Jeevan noted peripherally, little bits of translucent plastic clinging to his jacket and brushing against his skin. Edgar and Gloucester were distracted by the commotion, neither of them looking at Arthur, who was leaning on a plywood column, staring vacantly. There were shouts from backstage, two shadows approaching quickly. But Jeevan had reached Arthur by now, and he caught the actor as he lost consciousness, eased him gently to the floor. The snow was falling fast around them, shimmering in blue-white light. Arthur wasn't breathing. The two shadows, security men, had stopped a few paces away, presumably catching on by now that Jeevan wasn't a deranged fan. The audience was a clamor of voices, flashes from cell phone cameras, indistinct exclamations in the dark. Jesus Christ, Edgar said, oh Jesus. Gloucester had pulled away the gauze bandage that had covered half his face. By this point in the play, his character's eyes had been put out and seemed frozen in place his mouth opening and closing like a fish. Arthur's heart wasn't beating. Jeevan began CPR. Someone shouted an order and the curtain dropped, a whoosh of fabric and shadow that removed the audience from the equation and reduced the brilliance of the stage by half. The plastic snow was still falling. The security men had receded. The lights changed. The blues and whites of the snowstorm replaced by a fluorescent glare that seemed yellow by comparison. Jeevan worked silently in the margarine light, 
glancing sometimes at Arthur's face. Please, he thought. Please. Arthur's eyes were closed. There was movement in the curtain, someone batting at the fabric and fumbling for an opening from the other side. And then an older man in a gray suit was kneeling on the other side of Arthur's chest. I'm a cardiologist, he said, Walter Jacobi. His eyes were magnified by his glasses, and his hair had gone wispy on the top of his head. Jeevan Chowdhury, Jeevan said. He wasn't sure how long he'd been here. People were moving around him, but everyone seemed distant and indistinct except Arthur, and now this other man who'd joined them. It was like being in the eye of a storm, Jeevan thought. He and Walter and Arthur here together in the calm. Walter touched the actor's forehead once, gently, like a parent soothing a fevered child. They've called an ambulance, Walter said. The fallen curtain lent an unexpected intimacy to the stage. Jeevan was thinking of the time he'd interviewed Arthur in Los Angeles, years ago, during his brief career as an entertainment journalist. He was thinking of his girlfriend, Laura, wondering if she was waiting in her front row seat or if she might have gone out to the lobby. He was thinking, please start breathing again, please. He was thinking about the way the dropped curtain closed off the fourth wall and turned the stage into a room, albeit a room with cavernous space instead of a ceiling, fathoms of catwalks and lights between which a soul might slip undetected. It's a ridiculous thought, Jeevan told himself. Don't be stupid. But now there was a prickling at the back of his neck, a sense of being watched from above. Do you want me to take a turn? Walter asked. Jeevan understood that the cardiologist felt useless, so he nodded and raised his hands from Arthur's chest, and Walter picked up the rhythm. Not quite a room, Jeevan thought now, looking around the stage. It was too transitory, all those doorways and dark spaces between wings, the missing ceiling. It was more like a terminal, he thought, a train station or an airport, everyone passing quickly through. Thank you.